morning, Year 8. So we're continuing today with our geometry and we're doing classifying quadrilaterals or types of quadrilaterals. So a quadrilateral, don't forget, has four sides. Quad means four, lateral means sides. So all the shapes we're doing today all have four sides. So the different types of quadrilaterals, the first four-sided shape is a square. It has four equal sides and four right angles. There's a picture of one. In number two, a rectangle. It has four right angles. We don't really need to say any more about it than that. If it's got four right angles, it's going to be a rectangle. But we do know that these opposite sides are going to be equal, and so will this pair of opposite sides be equal as well. Okay, in number three, we have a rhombus. Think of a rhombus as a pushed over square. So it starts as a square, push it over to the left or the right, doesn't matter which way, and you're forming a rhombus. So it still has its four equal sides, but you push the angles out of shape. In number four, a parallelogram, think of that as a pushed over rectangle. It starts as a rectangle. Push it to the side, and you still have your sides being the same, so you'll have opposite sides will still be equal in both of them, and they're parallel, just like they were over here in the rectangle. The only thing that's changed is the angles, because you've pushed it to the side. So we have two pairs of opposite sides being parallel. They also will be two pairs of opposite sides being equal as well. In number five, we have a trapezium. That just has one pair of parallel sides. Nothing else special about a trapezium. In number six, a kite is just like the kite that flies in the sky. So these two sides are equal, and these two sides are equal. So we say that these two sides are next to each other or adjacent. So we have a pair of adjacent sides that are equal, and here's another pair of adjacent sides that are equal. So we have two pairs of adjacent sides being equal in the kite. The next two words we're going to learn are about convex quadrilaterals and non-convex quadrilaterals. You're probably not going to see a lot on this in any question or in a test, but you do need to know it in case it does come up. So a convex quadrilateral looks a bit like this one. So if you stood inside that shape and blew out, exhaled, it's a, you're pushing the sides out as far as they will go. The non-convex one, if you stood inside that shape and inhaled, sucked in some of the air, it would start coming towards you, which is what's happened here. All right, it's collapsing. All right, so up here in the convex quadrilateral, all the vertices point outwards. Down here in the non-convex quadrilateral, one of the vertices, this one here, is pointing inwards. Up here we have all diagonals lying within the shape. So if I drew in the diagonals, you can easily draw those inside the shape. But over here, one of the diagonals, so that one's okay from there to there, but this one joining here to here, that diagonal is outside the shape. Okay, so we don't normally deal with diagonals outside the shape. Up here, all angles in the diagram are less than 180 degrees. So that means if I look at this angle here, that's an obtuse angle. This one here is obtuse. This one's an acute angle. And this one over here is an acute angle as well. So all of those are acute or obtuse, and they're all less than 180 degrees. But down here, at this point inside the shape, we have that angle, and that angle is a reflex angle. So if it's got a reflex angle inside the shape, it's a non-convex quadrilateral. So we're going to be doing some examples on all of these notes, so make sure you've got everything copied down first, and we'll do some examples in the next video.